Today in another Florida Van Man repair video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace the clock spring in your T1N Sprinter. Now this is what your clock spring looks like. I'm being very careful with this one as this is my uh, good used unit here. Uh, but I pulled this out of a parts van. It was pretty simple. You are going to have to tear apart your steering column area quite a bit though. Of course, I'd like to take a minute to talk about my symptoms. So the clock spring directly delivers power through these pins into the steering wheel here. So my horn currently doesn't work. And by extension, I have an SRS light that is always on. So something inside my clock spring is damaged and we're about to find out what it is. Just the breakdown here. There is normally a plastic shroud that, that goes around here. You will have to take this out, of course. That's pretty easy to get out. There's two Phillips screws at the top and a 10 millimeter nut at the bottom. Then you're going to need to pull the 10 millimeter captive bolt up top and the 10 millimeter nut on the bottom to pull the fuse panel down. Once you've done that, you get in on each side of the steering wheel in this little access hole and get the T25 bolts that are in both halves of the steering wheel. That'll let you take the airbag cover out. And then you're going to need to get your significant other or someone else to come help you get the giant H10 bolt out of the center of the steering wheel. In addition, before you start this process, of course, you wanna make sure your battery's disconnected. My battery's been disconnected for about 20 minutes now. And you want to make sure that your wheels are straight ahead as shown and that you're ready to do this. Now, this clock spring is pretty important. The connectors you see on it are non-removable. That is this one here and this one at the top. They don't come out, so these wires have to be rounded down. And of course, you have to make sure that it's centered on the wheel. So there's marks to help you do that. Of course, you want the marks pointing up, and this is why you want the wheel to be forward. So if step one was remove the battery negative connection and the engine, Step two is going to be, of course, remove the Phillips and the 10 millimeter that hold the steering column trim over here on. And then you're just going to come over here and use a deep socketed 10 millimeter here to remove this captive nut. And then, of course, you want to come over here and remove the nut that holds that in. There are two connections to fish out here. There is this black one, which has a very noticeably different set of wires going to it. They kind of look almost like transparent, semi-transparent speaker wires, but you want to remove this connector. And then the other connector to remove is this red one right here, and that's your airbag connector. I have these Nyko very long Torx bits. I'm going to use this T25 here. These are also very useful for getting into the doors here and removing the bolts that hold the mirrors on place. So if you want to swap mirrors later, these make it easy to do. Of course, make sure the battery is disconnected. As you can see, there's one on this side. Now the bolts that hold this airbag cover in are captive bolts. They're not very tight and they don't need a lot of torque once they're back in. And since they're captive, you don't have to worry about them falling out. And now you should be able to carefully lift the airbag out. This connector just pulls right off pretty easily. And then it is safe to set this aside. Okay. So at this point, I would say it's time to remove the wheel. All right, so I'm gonna get somebody to hold the steering wheel real quick. And you're pulling that way, right? Yeah. Ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Oh, there we go. You got it? Yep. Ow. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <sighs> say hi to the camera. Hi. Okay, so once you've had your significant other, you undo the bolt. Okay, lots of thread lockers still left on it. Okay, so now all of these wires are gonna have to come out, and now the wheel should just gently lift off. Yep, this clock spring doesn't look especially damaged in any way. So the wire routes down around here 
and then disappears into the abyss of wires here. You are going to need a very small screwdriver to remove the two Phillips head screws located here and here. And that's essential to also making sure that everything's clocked and lined up. Because as you can see, when it's bolted on, this is supposed to be able to move a little bit, but it's locked to the locked to the wheel, of course, right now, from what I can see. There we go. Okay, so now that I've freed the wires for the clock spring, I'm gonna just unscrew these bits and bops here. Pretty long screws. Again, don't take a lot of torque to uh, get these down either. Okay, so now you're just going to gently lift it up. And there we go, that came out nice and easy. I'm using just this little horsehair brush to just brush and clean. And it's not super abrasive. Soapy water isn't gonna damage anything. And the brushes really help get the dirt that's built up over uh, the last 20 years of this truck existing. Okay, so now putting the replacement clock spring back on. Pretty much just want to line up the screw holes. There we go. I didn't force it, I didn't push too hard. It's just about trying a few times. And of course the torque on these is not very tight at all. Not super tight, just snug. So now I'm gonna route the wires down. Pretty much just like it was from the factory. Don't force these connectors. They don't really take a lot of force. The airbag one, same thing. If they don't go in right the one way, flip them over and try again. There we go. The airbag connector truly only goes one way. I guess the only thing left to do is to put the wheel back on. Now, I've cleaned this up a little bit. I'm going to put a cover on it. I know that there's some like spray foam crap on it, but this one's starting to fall apart, but it's more intact than my existing steering wheel. So I'll take it. Let's start by routing these wires through. Two and three coming from the clock spring. Two. We'll just drop the wheel on. There we go, and it should just fall right into place there. Be right about where you left it. Now remember to connect the yellow wire from this. On the left side of the steering wheel, the black wire from this, and this upper terminal here. On the steering wheel. Now I'm just going to finger tight the bolt back into the steering wheel here. Okay, looks like that's about as far as I can finger thread it. So now I'm just gonna tighten it with the ratchet a bit. Holding the steering wheel, of course. All right, I think I'm gonna have to switch to the breaker bar now. Now, there's a prior red mark there that I'm lining this up with, which is why I'm torquing this so tight. But that is a replacement steering wheel in. The next step would be to reconnect the airbag connector here. I now present to you a freshly painted airbag cover with which I will take great care not to bang or touch too much. Now, I guess it just goes as stated previously. The proper torque setting for these is not very tight. There we go, that's not very tight. Okay, we're almost at the point where I need to reconnect the battery and clear some SRS codes. 
basically the first immediate test of knowing if this worked or not is if I get a horn now. I do have a horn now, that's good news. My SRS light though, don't know about that. I think I might still have to clear it with my scanner. Okay, so after starting the van, I did still have an SRS light on, but with the AP200, I was able to clear it. It was just the residual code. After clearing it, the SRS light now goes off after it does a short self-test. Excellent, and of course, I have a horn again. Thanks for watching this episode of Florida Van Man. I do have a horn now, that's good news.